Hey, how's it going, Headlesses? Gaia Ghost here, and today I wanted to do a deep dive into the new Queen in the Sea DLC teaser info we just got from Motion Twin. Starting with some of the developer statements. Battle your way through a sunken shipwreck. Scale a soaring lighthouse and confront your deadliest foe yet. If you manage to survive all of that, maybe you'll finally get off of this island. I know a lot of OG players are hoping the Fisherman will make an appearance for this. He was an NPC in early access before Hand of the King was finished. Talking to him would send you back to the prisoner's quarters. And it would be cool to see him return for things coming full circle, and he fits with the nautical theme of these biomes, of course. The two new biomes are called the Infested Shipwreck and the Lighthouse. These will be parallel to the High Peak Castle and Throne Room levels. Yes, the Hand of the King won't be the only final challenger anymore. I like how they've been foreshadowing this over the Bad Seed and Fatal Falls DLCs, and it's kind of cool to see everybody's lore theories basically be proven right. The DLC will be $4.99 or equivalent, just like the other two. Charging this helps to support Motion Twin during the development of the next project, as well as continuing free updates of Dead Cells. They go on to say that after the DLC, that's exactly what they'll be doing, releasing more free content, and they've already got a good chunk of it planned, so we shouldn't be getting bored with them anytime soon. There'll be new weapons and enemies to play with. Well, we knew that. And a not-so-cuddly pet. Now, this draws my attention because there's already a pet for every color, so we might finally get a dual-scaling one. I'm guessing Tactics and Survival since they just did Brutality. And based on some of these screenshots, we can conclude that at least some of the new weapons are going to be the ones that we see the Queen's henchmen using. Henchwomen. Hench persons. I'm not sure what the politically correct version of that is right now, but y you get the idea. In the promotional art and the trailer, we actually get a pretty good look at all of these weapons. And as I'm sure some of you have noticed, they're the same ones that are missing from the weapon rack in the castle. Also, the couch there is in the same style as the one found in the screenshot and in the Arboretum. And moreover, the one in the Arboretum has the same type of fountain that the Beheaded uses to travel back to the prisoner's quarters at the end of each run. Perhaps the developers foreshadowing that the Queen was a homunculus. Little side note, there's also what appears to be a desecrated statue of the King in her area. Probably just imagery to drive home how much they really hate him. In the corner of one of the shipwreck screenshots, there's some extra information most of it just general and unimportant, but one thing that drew my attention was mobs count 175 out of 175, excluding Malay spawns. 175 enemies is a lot, considerably more than any other biome. They mentioned that the levels are parallel with the distillery, castle, and throne room, but the levels might be so long and hard that it's more like a full 5 BC run. Now, a couple of Easter egg lore theories, if you will. Uh, the Queen NPC very much has her own aesthetic, but the portrait in the castle looks a lot like the Thumerian Queen from Bloodborne. Similar dress, lots of red, one's blood and one's roses, but you know. The Thumerian Queen is also the last secret boss in that game, who is found after a series of procedurally generated seed dungeons. Sound familiar? Maybe I'm just connecting dots that aren't there, but Bloodborne also popularized the health rally mechanic that Dead Cells uses, and I'm getting total Beast Hunter safe vibes from this weapon. Also, there's been a lot of reference to the moon in Dead Cells lore. An obvious Easter egg to Castlevania, one of their biggest inspirations. They're not the only game to have done that. But since the moon is so central to the DLC imagery, and to the ending of these games, I feel like there's a very good chance it will play a pivotal role in the new ending, and probably be somehow associated with the malaise. Is there any merit to these easter egg theories? Or am I just completely out to lunch on this one? Let me know what you think in the comments.
Thanks, guys.